So let's suppose you have your application in North America and you are worried about a disaster that might cause your data no longer be available to your users. So you think, why not have your data available at some other region? That might save us all, isn't it? Then what is that you should do? Want to know the answer? Stick with me on this and we together will find the way. Please welcome our very own AWS Aurora database. But wait, there is something that I want all of you to keep in mind. The current exam that we have for Solutions Architect is going to be out of date post March 22nd this year, 2020. So by obsolete, it doesn't mean your certifications won't have any value. It'll still hold for two years, but there will be a new pattern for the exam after March 22nd. So if you wish to give your exams before that, you still have a lot of time. Don't worry, we'll cover the differences in the lessons to come. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do it right now. So let's begin. So the first thing that you need to understand about Amazon Aurora is that it's a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. And Amazon Aurora is up to five times faster than standard MySQL databases and three times faster than standard PostgreSQL databases. And it provides the security, availability and reliability of commercial databases at one tenth the cost of the traditional databases. So the major differences here with Amazon Aurora is that uh, Amazon Aurora is fully managed by Amazon's RDS or the relational database service, which automates the time consuming administration tasks that we have like hardware provisioning, which we all know like server racks and basic hardware that we provision, the database setup like installation, patching, so it involves like which version is secure and compatible and it helps with the backup as well for your data as you saw with classic RDS. So the major advantage that you and your customers and clients have is that the Amazon Aurora features a distributed fault tolerant self healing storage system that auto scales up to 64 terabyte per database instance. And when it comes to performance, Amazon Aurora delivers high performance and availability with up to 15 low latency read replicas. Second is the point in time recovery. So let's suppose you want your data that was backed up like six days back, you can do that as well. Third is the continuous backup that you get as your snapshots get uploaded to Amazon S3. And last but not the least is replication across three availability zones. So this was a brief introduction to the Amazon Aurora database. Let's move on. So let's see the benefits of using Amazon Aurora. So the first point that we have here is high performance and scalability. So you get up to five times the throughput of standard MySQL and three times the throughput of standard PostgreSQL databases. You get a budget price at about one tenth the cost that we already discussed. You can easily scale your database deployment up and down from smaller to larger instance types as your need changes. To scale read capacity and performance, you can add up to 15 low latency read replicas across three availability zones. And Amazon Aurora, as we already discussed, automatically grows your storage when you need them up to 64 terabyte per database instance. Wonderful, isn't it? And the next one that we have here is high availability and durability. So Amazon Aurora is designed to offer greater than 99.99% availability replicating six copies of your data across three availability zones and backing up your data continuously to Amazon S3. With global database that we have, a single Aurora database can span multiple AWS regions to enable fast local reads and quick disaster recovery. So the third point that we have here is highly secure. Yes, security is very much important. So security uh, in Aurora actually includes network isolations using Amazon VPC and encryption at rest using keys you create and control through AWS key management service that is a KMS and encryption of data in transit using SSL. On an encrypted Amazon Aurora instance, data in the underlying storage is encrypted as are the automated backups, snapshots and replicas in the same cluster. So if your Amazon Aurora instance is encrypted, the data that you have on the storage will also be encrypted as well as your backups, snapshots and replicas also will be encrypted in the same cluster. So the fourth point is that we have 
for us is mysql and postgresql compatible so if you already have a mysql or postgresql database you can easily migrate your mysql or postgresql databases to aurora using the standard mysql or postgresql import export tools and snapshots or snapshots actually so fully managed so this is one of the beautiful features that moving into cloud with aws we get it so amazon aurora is fully managed by amazon rds so you no longer need to worry about the database management tasks such as hardware provisioning software patching setup configurations or backup and amazon aurora automatically and continuously monitors and backs up your database to amazon s3 with that you get a point in time recovery as well so you can monitor your database performance using amazon cloudwatch mostly the exam might ask you about monitoring and you must remember that monitoring techniques involve mostly about amazon cloudwatch and enhanced monitoring and performance insights so as you now know why people are crazy about aws aurora let's check how it actually works so this is a very interesting part and very important for the exam as well let's talk about how the read replica and high availability works for amazon aurora database so for high availability we must ensure we have our aurora database set up across multiple availability zones that probably is the first thing we need uh, when we talk about availability so in hindsight you should remember that amazon aurora is designed to offer greater than 99.99 percent availability replicating six copies of your data across three availability zones and backing up your data continuously to amazon s3 so let's bring up our three az's so we have our three availability zones ap south 1a ap south 1b and ap south 1c so here we have the data that we wish to store on the aurora database regardless of what database it is either it can be a mysql or postgresql don't get confused with the database service and the engine aurora provisions a service to house your database engine so as we have our az ready the data replication enabled which we call shared data or storage volume replications so Amazon Aurora stores six copies of your data across three availability zones, isn't it? And the storage is basically stripped across multiple volumes. Let's see this in action. So as you see, our data is being copied across three availability zones and they are being replicated across multiple instances. Let us wait for our data to be replicated. Okay. Coming back to the Amazon Aurora primary instance, you get a master endpoint for writing the data to the database. And remember, it needs four copies out of six to write. And you get a read replica, which needs three copies out of six to read. So let's bring up our read replicas in other availability zones as well. Wonderful, isn't it? So be assured if there is a problem, the master node that you have here will auto fail over in just or less than 30 seconds. So it's a beautiful thing to have. And you also get the master along with 15 other read replicas for your read operations. So master plus 15 other read replicas. And one of the best thing is that you get cross region replications. So if your database is in some other region, you will find your data being replicated there as well. So I hope you got this right. Remember that Amazon Aurora stores six copies of your data across three availability zones and the storage is basically stripped across multiple volumes. You will get a master endpoint for writing the data to the database. And remember, it needs four copies out of six to write. And you get a read replica, which needs three copies out of six to read. And also the master along with 15 other read replicas for your read operations, thus making your database highly available. If everything is set, then let's move on. So now let's discuss on the architecture for Aurora client and its interaction to the Aurora cluster. So as we know that the shared volume read replicas, we can have auto scale from up to 10 GB to 64 terabytes per instance. Remember in Aurora, you get the master node or the DNS, which you can use to write the data, uh, which as you may know, can fail. And upon failover, what happens? The DNS changes. And if the DNS changes upon failover of the master, as itself feels, AWS creates a new one to make sure that your write operations run smoothly. And for that, RDS provides you a write endpoint. Yes, a write endpoint or the DNS name, which always points to the master even if there is a failover. 
In this way, RDS knows where the master is in case the client wants to write to the database. Next, listen to this very carefully. I already told you, you can create read replicas and remember they can auto scale up to 15 read replica instances. This is awesome. But when we speak about auto scaling, we know the instances are bound to topple or fail. Then how will the client or application know how to connect to the read replicas? For this, RDS provides a reader endpoint, which also acts as a load balancer and ensures you have accurate read endpoints ready to be consumed when you need them. It connects to all the read replicas and does the job for you to remember where your read replicas are. I hope you will remember all this. If you have any confusions, post the queries in the comment section below and we'll sort them out. So if everything is fine, let's move on. So it's time now to discuss a new offering by Aurora that's called the Aurora Serverless. So what you need to remember here is Amazon Aurora Serverless is an on-demand auto scaling configuration for Amazon Aurora, which is basically MySQL compatible and PostgreSQL compatible, where the database will automatically start up, shut down and scale capacity up or down based on your application needs. And it enables you to run your database in the cloud without managing any database instances. So serverless means you don't manage most of the tasks that you would with the traditional Aurora and you simply create a database endpoint, optionally specify the desired capacity that you have, database capacity that, that you have, the range that you have and connect your applications to that. And serverless mostly gives the cost benefits where you pay on a per second basis for the database capacity you use when the database is active. So no capacity planning is needed for these serverless databases. So when we visualize, see this, we have our client and it wants to access the Aurora database. And like previous explanations, we have our shared scaling for volumes and for the client to connect to the AWS Aurora, connect to the proxy fleet, which then redirects the request to the Amazon Aurora. I hope you remember the RDS proxy that I mentioned in my last session for AWS RDS. Remember with Aurora serverless, the database endpoint connects to a proxy fleet that routes the workload to a fleet of resources that are automatically scaled. Because of the proxy fleet, connections are continuous as Aurora serverless scales the resources automatically based on the minimum and maximum capacity specifications. Here also, you can see with the increase in demand, it scales automatically and we don't need to change or configure anything. That's the beauty of Aurora serverless. And here you don't need to worry about the modifications you need to make or if you need to change your application to use proxy fleet, Aurora serverless manages the connections automatically. So let us go over the points that I carefully mentioned here as well. So for the first point that we have here is it removes the complexity of managing database instances and capacity. The second point that we have here, the database will automatically start up, shut down and scale to match your application's needs. So that is very nice. And it seamlessly scales uh, compute and memory capacity as needed with no disruption to the client connections. And it gives you the pay only for the database resources you consume on a per second basis. And it is built on distributed fault tolerance self healing Aurora storage with six way replication to protect against data loss. So I hope you won't be forgetting the points that I have made here. If you feel you missed out on something, watch the video again so that you can grasp everything that I've mentioned here. It's really important for the exam. So now we have discussed Aurora for multi-AZ, RDS for multi-AZ, single region and serverless as well. So let's discuss Aurora Global Database then. So Amazon Aurora Global Database is designed for globally distributed applications, allowing a single Amazon Aurora database to span across multiple AWS regions. So what it means is you can have your database across multiple geographical locations. For example, if you have a database at Mumbai, that is Asia, uh, you can have the same in Oregon that is in USA. So you might say, how is it possible? The same database, thousands of miles of what? Will it be able to perform accurately or same as the ones that are close to us? I'll say yes, it will be. AWS Aurora Global Database replicates your data with no impact on database performance, enables fast local reads and with low latency in each region and provides disaster recovery from region-wide outages. And Global Database uses storage-based replications with typical latency of less than one second. 
using dedicated infrastructure that leaves your database fully available to serve application workloads. Even though there is an outage, it's less than one minute and a secondary region will be up and running for your use. So before moving to the visual explanations, there are two features that we need to discuss here. The first point that we have here is sub-second data access in any region. So with all the overheads, you have the global database regardless of the number and the location of secondary regions. The typical cross-region replication latency is a mind-blowing below one second. That is why it's called sub-second data access in any region. And one more reason to awe upon the global database is that extending your database to additional regions has no impact on performance. The second one is the cross-region disaster recovery. As we discussed in the features above, if your primary region suffers a performance degradation or outage, you can promote one of the secondary region to take read or to write responsibilities. So no worries about the power failures or any other outage your application will always be available. So if you wish, you can promote one of your secondary regions to take up the responsibility for reading and writing. The next point is probably the most outstanding features I feel is that an Aurora cluster can recover in less than one minute, even in the event of a complete regional outage. So if the whole region has collapsed, also within one minute, you'll be up and running. That's very good. And for the business point of view, it provides your application with an effective recovery point objective that is a RPO of one second and a recovery time objective or RTO of less than one minute. Do you know what is the difference between RTO and RPO and why it is important for the organization and the product and for you? If you don't, let's discuss this. So RPO, which is also known as recovery point objective, is basically the interval of time that might pass during an outage before the quantity of data lost during that period exceeds the threshold set by your organization. Lot of words, isn't it? So for example, let's suppose your company says all the data that has been backed up should be within the last 10 hours. So if there is an outage and your last restored data is from eight hours back, then you're in a safe zone, which is basically your RPO. So when it comes to AWS Aurora Global Database, it has an RPO of one second. That's mind numbing. And when it comes to RTO or what we call as our recovery time objective, it is a target time you set for the recovery of your data and infrastructure after a disaster has stuck. So for example, if your company says that your application can survive a failure time of let's suppose 10 minutes, then you need to ensure your data and infrastructure is up within the time limit. And when we see this in Aurora Global Databases, it's only one second. Let's visually see how it works. So we have our primary region, US East 1, where we have our Aurora database and we are doing just fine. But we wanted to support data to be available across another region that is the US East 2, which is our secondary region or the secondary database that we have. Our primary region holds the master where we store the data and with the cross-region application, it gets written to the other region, which we only use for reading. So in the first primary region that you have, you have the provision to read and write, and you can create a secondary region as well, where you have only read-only access. So let's go over the points once again. I just want you to remember that if you have your database and you want it to be set up in any other region apart from the region that you have, you can use Amazon Aurora Global Databases. And this was a lot of information, but having said that, do you remember the question that I asked in the beginning of the session? Let us see if you're sure about the solution based on the session we had here. Let's check that. So I asked you, let's suppose you have your application in North America and you're worried about a disaster that might cause your data no longer be available to your users. So you think, why not have your data available at some other region? That might save us all, isn't it? So what is that you should do? I guess you already have the answer. Yes, you are right. It's the AWS Aurora Global Database. So Aurora's global database replicates your data with no impact on database performance, enables fast local reads with low latencies in each region and provides disaster recovery from region-wide outages. Congratulations on getting it right. And if you didn't, I think I need to work on my technical skills and hopefully get an early retirement and wishfully book my trip to Vegas. I hope that doesn't come to that. Just kidding. So thanks to everyone for joining in for today's session on AWS. 
I hope it was a good one. In the next episode, we will be discussing about AWS Route 53. So please don't miss out on that. And something that might help you is uh, subscribing to the channel and hitting that cute bell icon that we have. And please don't forget to hit the like button and put in your comments on what you liked, what you didn't. So until next time, keep learning, keep rocking and Spytholic signing off.